everybody. Uh, this may be a little a little late in the day for this, but this is a call for new IPFS implementations. My name is Adin. Uh, I am a fan of IPFS. I've been working on it for about three and a half years, and I am one of the Go IPFS maintainers. A little bit about Go IPFS. Uh, it's the earliest implementation of, of IPFS. I think the first commit was in about 2014. Uh, it is the most used implementation of IPFS. And importantly, it is not exactly equal to what IPFS, the protocol, is. Other things that are not IPFS include IPFS.io or its sibling dweb.link, things that support BitSwap and the IPFS public DHT, things that only support BitSwap, things that support TCP. These are things that are not exactly equal to IPFS. So what is IPFS? Uh, I'm not saying. Um, I think the boundaries of what it means to, to be an IPFS implementation are, are a little fuzzy. And something that like as a community with, with many stakeholders and what IPFS is, is an area that we can sort of define boundaries with together. Um, it's not like, oh, Go IPFS does X, therefore Adina is a maintainer of Go IPFS and says, this is what IPFS is, right? That feels like we're back to Go IPFS is not IPFS. Uh, it is content addressing. There, that's certainly part of it. Uh, some areas you may want to think about of like, is this pushing it? is uh, BitTorrent clients can use info hashes to download data. So are they IPFS implementations? Uh, if not, why not? If I put the, the magic incantation below, uh, which for those not, not fluent in multi-formats means I am a BitTorrent file that is CIDV1 with a SHA-1 that is 160 bits long. Uh, is that enough? If not, what else do we need? I feel like there's some area to explore there. There's already a bunch of IPFS implementations, so so this isn't this isn't news. Uh, there's about 15 on this list that uh, some folks compiled in the lead up to this to this meeting. You can click there. Uh, the the link for this is hackmd slash uh slash uh, more IPFS with an A because uh, that's what we're looking for here. Uh, so what's wrong with just having a single primary IPFS implementation. There's just a lot of use cases. We, we've been through this sort of already, and we've seen this through a number of the presentations so far today. Um, putting them all in, in one place hurts. Uh, it's hard to keep everybody, you know, sort of everybody's thing happy. You're like, oh, I want to add in, can I have, you know, IPFS daemon dash dash upside down. That only works for me, but I swear it's fine. It's fine. It's just a config flag. It's all I need, but it's going to be great. And it's, it's hard to do that because it interferes with the various config flags that everybody else wants. Um, and basically it's just, it's sort of having this, this very wide, you end up having this very wide interface of like this one implementation needs to solve all problems. So you have effectively the empty interface for what does Go IPFS do, which is not, which is not great. You don't get to move as fast as you could, like as as uh, you know, Jerelpo mentioned earlier today. Uh, also, um, I wish it came this way when when I got repo permissions. But becoming a Go IPFS maintainer does not mean that uh, that you're perfect. Uh, you make mistakes. Uh, you make bets that maybe you shouldn't, and you don't make bets that maybe you should. People should be able to make these to make these sorts of bets, right? Uh, for what is what is the right way to do content routing? What is the right way to do data transfer? What's the right way to do mutability? Um, we can try and make things pluggable. Some of the work that was done uh, around DNS link uh, and how we can sort of enable that to uh, as as an as an API to cover many different mutability systems is is helpful. But sometimes you want to build things in, and deciding what to build in requires making a bet. On, on some technology. Um, and if we look around, right, there are many HTTP clients and servers. And even you know, BitTorrent, which is, which is uh, not, not too dissimilar from us uh, in, in a number of ways, also has many clients. Um, so this is, you know, even within the peer-to-peer -peer world, if you're going to, to sort of grow, grow your adoption like this, having lots of clients seems, seems like a reasonable thing to do. Yeah, so this is, just more, just more IPFS implementations. And, and some of these are, 
when I say small and big here, these aren't, these aren't meant as like a, one of these is a better thing to do than another, but just the scope of like how much can change, right? Writing with a different language or for a different platform is, is one way to do this, right? Um, how you want to change the structure of where, how the data lives, how you interact with the data. Um, what sort of assumptions you can make about the data, right? These, these are all part of it. Um, you know, elastic, you know, the thing that the Linux type PFS, right. Made, made assumptions about how you got to interact with the data that could make things faster and better for that use case. Right. This is, this is part of it. This is, these things are important. Um, but there's ways to change this that go further that are like, I want new protocols. I want new protocols for content routing. I want new protocols for data transfer. Um, I want, you know, I want new protocols for, for mutability. How do I do this? Um, I want, I may want networks that are, some are disjoint. Uh, I may want ways in which we can combine them. Um, how do we want to do this? What are the right ways in which to combine it to, to make networks that are, are slightly different compatible, right? I have a group that is offline in the woods and then they come back to everybody else. How do, how do we want that bridging to occur so that they can interact with each other in one way and then come back and interact with everybody else separately? So examples, um, Elastic IPFS is, is one, one example. Uh, the goal of this implementation was, I would like to serve data to other IPFS nodes and make it easy to work running it in like a commercial cloud environment. That's like the basic pitch. And they they are doing this, right? This goes back. This is like, yeah, we have we have we are re reworking things to do, you know, have have the databases and APIs that we need to make this work for us. But you could you could go a little broader. Uh, you could have a, you know, an IPFS and BitTorrent server. So, IPLD is pretty cool. Uh, means we can basically represent any of the existing hash linked data formats. Uh, which is almost everything in the peer-to-peer -peer space has tried this and something's not in the peer-to-peer -peer space as well. Um, so couldn't I just take a BitTorrent server and then plug in some pieces to like serve the data over BitSwap and advertise it to some content routing system, DHT, indexer, a, fa a tracker, a, like a BitTorrent tracker. Wouldn't, wouldn't that also work? Uh, and that way I could, I could sort of serve data to both networks without duplicating the data or anything like that. And it sort of works in similar ways. Let's people utilize both sets of clients to fetch the data. You could flip this around and do it on the client side, which is people could just use info hashes as CIDs with the, uh, the magic incantation from earlier uh, and build a network and build a client uh, that can fetch from both, right? So this is pluggability, I think, as Carson mentioned, not just at the, and, and as Dietrich mentioned, not just uh, at libp2p as equal, equals network, you know, pluggability. But yeah, sure, why not? Just swap in the BitTorrent protocol. That seems like another way you could fetch data that's based on a content address identifier. It only works for that one type of data and that one type of network, but, but why not? And, and more broadly, if we look at some of these content addressed systems uh, or if we look at systems that try and do like decentralized storage or sharing in some way they're all using hashes uh, they're all using hashes underneath and they tend to do my system like, they want like urls that look like my system they want like you know for for many like blockchain storage things it's like blockchain storage colon slash slash my transaction id you're like, why? why? Why would you do this? Couldn't, wouldn't you be happy to get that data from anywhere, not specifically like a transaction? But it's a content address. I could just make it a hash. I, I have a hash. I can put a, put a codec in front of it. And now I know how to sort of work with the data here. And we can allow IPFS to be like a little broader in terms of the sets of data in which it, which it encompasses, right? Make it easier to work with things that are not not Unix FS. Uh, and we've already, you know, there's already work going on there in terms of how this goes on with gateways and working with car files 
and the great work folks have done on, on other codecs, whether it's like Dag Siebel or Dag Jose and work with UCANs. So we're getting there, but there's, there's room to, to keep moving forward. And experimenting with, with new protocols. You can show what is, what is different, show why yours is better. Um, and data transfer protocols alone, I, I have like a list of like four or so things that I want to exist that are, are not there right now. I want protocols that just transfer over manifests of CIDs. I want protocols that can handle transferring very large like SHA-2 and Blake-3 objects in verifiable ways. I want protocols that are optimized for things that are Merkle trees, but like not well suited to bit swap or graph or, or graph sync because they're the blocks at the bottom are too small, right? Trying to move around things like Filecoin pieces. Like there's so many options here. Why are we restricted just these two? Um, more content routing systems. Really just many, like there's so many possibilities. People have ideas. Uh, people should be able to feel free to experiment with some of these. Um, I think IPFS were trying to, to help with some like pluggable APIs here, but that's just go IPFS, like take the libraries, rip them apart, <laughs> use what you need. Um, and then of course, like authentication and mutability and, and mutability and I guess encryption is, is related in here too, where like there are very opinionated ways to do anything related to like protecting users in some way, authentication, mutability, encryption. Uh, Mutability is a little different because it's about maybe sometimes it's about identities, but there's opinionated ways to do this. There's not only there's not only going to be you know one one best way. You should be able to try them out, and they shouldn't all be like, uh, it's not like IPFS. It's like something similar. It's like no, these are IPFS implementations. They're just you've just chosen to use a different protocol. That if your thing works out well, other people start adopting because you had a good idea. And I guess maybe the corollary to that is there are no perfect implementations. It's it's not that you're not going to do it. People have different use cases. Is what this is all about. It's not. Oh, if only Go IPFS did ABC, that would that would be the dream. Uh, there's there's many different ways to do this. Um, try it out. Maybe it'll be maybe the architecture or your design will be good. Maybe not, and then it's okay. I'll try again. Um, you know, a, a call out of this is like, WebAssembly is really cool. I like it. I have some experiments I've done with it. It doesn't solve all your problems saying, oh, if, it, if I wrote it in WebAssembly, that would, that would solve all my problems. It could load other WebAssembly and that would solve even more of my problems. But, but it, it's, it is not, it is not the, the answer to, to everything, um, which sort of makes sense. Almost nothing is. Some things maybe we want to watch out for uh, is, Build what works for you. This is good. Being able to explain how it works and how it fits together with other implementations is, is part of this. As I sort of mentioned in the last session, being able to describe to users and developers how it is that these different IPFS implementations and pieces fit together um, is important to not lead to, to user confusion, right? Help them understand why something has worked, why something doesn't work. Um, sometimes this can be confusing. Like the model where we've switched to self-certified data where you can pull data from anywhere, um, it changes things. Uh, a story I kind of like to, to go to here is, I ran Go IPFS on my laptop and I, I fetched some data and you know the speed was okay. But uh, when I did it on my desktop, it was really fast. I think you guys should really figure out like your CPU usage and something, because it's just not, it's just much better on desktops than it is on laptops. And you're like, well, well, that's not really what happened. What happened is you fetched it on your laptop from wherever it came from. And then your desktop fetched it from your laptop at like land speed, which was like really fast. Uh, and and that's, <laughs> that's what happened there. And so some of these intuitions that people come from like the HTTP world of like, Yep, I asked for the data, and then you sent it back to me, and I can like keep reproducing that, right? Um, it changes, and so making, you know, tooling, documentation, communication to make it easier for people to understand how the pieces fit together um, is, I think, part of this. 
So sum up, we need more implementations. We need people to experiment, build more things. Join the crew. Uh, we have an implementer sync uh, every, every other week. And come, say hi, tell us what you're building. See, see what's, going, what's going right, what's going wrong. See if you can find other people who want to work with you on solving those things that are going wrong. And, and say hi. Whether it's GitHub, Matrix, Discord, Slack. We have a lot of places where you can find us. Uh, but say hi.